Kevin was happy that his last conversation with Lily had gone so well. Now that he was the owner of the penthouse at Corwin Tower, he needed to spend a few days buying everything he needed. It was an enormous two-floor apartment with its own private elevator, so it took a lot of effort. After he'd arranged everything, he had a little free time, so he called Lily early in the morning. Hi, Kevin. When are you coming back? She asked. She didn't even give him a chance to answer. I'll be waiting for you at home. Lily hung up the phone with a smile. Once Lily knew that Kevin would be back later that day, she decided not to go to work. Instead, she washed up and got dressed in one of her nicest outfits. Why are you letting that guy come back? Didn't he abandon you? Dorothy looked at Lily, who was sitting on the sofa combing her hair, and said, I went to a lot of trouble to introduce you to Garrett Butcher. How did that go? Don't ask me again. I'm not going to divorce Kevin, Lily said without looking up. This really upset Dorothy. Why did you ever marry him? He lived in her house for free for almost three years. All he did was offer himself in a hostage exchange, and now you're ready to run back to him. Lily put down her comb and let out a sigh. Kevin saved you too, or have you forgotten that? You want me to thank him for such a small thing? Never! Dorothy slapped the table hard. Dorothy continued her tirade. Let me ask you this. During the three years you and Kevin were married, were you ever happy? Can he give you the life you want? Every other wealthy family I know has successful son-in-laws. Some of them are worth millions. How does Kevin compare to them? Dorothy's complaining was interrupted by the sound of an engine out in the street. She looked out the window and was astonished to see Kevin getting out of a brand new sports car. I'm back. Kevin smiled and waved at Dorothy. Dorothy looked at Kevin in shock and then looked at the sports car parked outside. Kevin? Dorothy asked in disbelief. Kevin nodded slightly at Dorothy. Then he walked into the living room and said to Lily with a smile, I'm back. Lily looked at the sports car parked in front of the house. She wasn't sure what to make of it. That's my boss's car. Because I'm taking the day off, he lent it to me, Kevin explained with a smile. Before Lily could say anything, Dorothy interrupted. Ah, so it's your boss's car. For a second, I thought you were doing better financially. Kevin shook his head a little and smirked when he heard her say that. He was used to Dorothy's attitudes towards him and it looked like things hadn't changed. Still a good for nothing, I see. Dorothy looked at Kevin's indifferent expression and it only made her more irritated. Dorothy turned around and looked at Lily as she continued her attack on Kevin. I just don't understand. What are you waiting for? Wasn't Garrett Butcher good enough for you? This is making me sick. Mind your own business, Mom, Lily said with a sigh. He's found a job now, so I want to give him a chance to show me he's changed. Dorothy didn't argue with her. She just glared at Kevin and went into her room. So, we're not getting a divorce? Kevin asked Lily with a smile. That depends on how things go, Lily said very calmly. Kevin didn't say anything else. No matter what decision Lily ended up making, he would respect her wishes. When he thought about it, Lily had always put a lot of pressure on him. Lily looked over at Kevin a couple of times. For some reason, she was starting to blush. I'm going to head upstairs to rest. Kevin followed her upstairs. After he entered the bedroom, he saw how messy it was. It looks like no one has cleaned in a few days. He began tidying up. Dorothy walked in and saw Kevin cleaning like everything was back to normal. She angrily took out her phone and dialed Garrett's number. Aunt Dorothy, what do you want? His voice wasn't very warm. Dorothy didn't pay any attention to that and got straight to the point. Garrett, did you have a nice date with Lily? How are you guys getting along? Dorothy's tone was extremely gentle, as if Garrett had already become her son-in-law. Garrett sounded very anxious. Aunt Dorothy, I think Lily and Kevin are a match made in heaven. I don't want to come between them. This really surprised Dorothy. She asked him, Are you okay, Garrett? What are you talking about? Kevin's nobody compared to you. Aunt Dorothy, I'm absolutely serious. If you see Kevin again, please tell him I said hi. You can also tell him that I wish him and Lily many years of happiness. Dorothy looked at her phone with a confused expression on her face. She was wondering if she'd called the wrong number. 
Garrett, is there something wrong? Dorothy asked hesitantly. No, Aunt Dorothy, there's nothing wrong. Nothing at all. I still have some work to do, so I have to get going. Bye. Then he immediately hung up the phone. Dorothy angrily threw her phone onto the bed. She really didn't understand what was going on with Garrett. She was certain that he had said that he was interested in Lily. Suddenly, there was a knock on the front door. Dorothy frowned slightly and walked over to answer it. Who is it? Hi, Aunt Dorothy. She opened the door and Rachel walked in. Hi, Rachel. Please have a seat, Dorothy said with a smile. She turned around and shouted upstairs, Lily, Rachel is here. When Lily walked downstairs, she sat down on the sofa next to Rachel and started chatting with her. Dorothy shouted upstairs again, Kevin, what are you doing? Come down here. When Rachel heard this, her smile turned into a look of surprise. She gulped and asked Lily, Is Kevin home? Ever since Rachel found out who Kevin really was, she didn't dare to come over and visit Lily. The night before, when she was talking to Lily on a video call, she found out that Kevin hadn't been home in a few days, so she figured it was safe to come over and hang out with her friend. She certainly didn't expect Kevin to actually be there. He just came back today. Lily didn't notice the change in Rachel's expression. Just as Rachel was about to find an excuse to head home, she saw Kevin walking slowly down the stairs. When he saw Rachel, he gave her a slight smile. What are you still standing there for? Make a cup of coffee for Rachel, Dorothy snapped at Kevin. But he just stood there on the bottom step, leaning lightly on the handrail. Rachel stood up and said, Oh, you don't need to go to any trouble. I'm not thirsty. Lily frowned at her friend. Rachel, you don't seem to be yourself. Are you okay? Lily asked her with a hint of doubt in her voice. That's possible. Maybe it's because I didn't get enough sleep last night, Rachel explained. But Dorothy also felt that something was wrong. She thought about the strange conversation with Garrett and now Rachel's odd behavior. Why is everyone so afraid of this bum? Dorothy thought to herself. Then go to the fridge and get her some fruit, Dorothy barked at Kevin. No need, Aunt Dorothy. I still have some things to do, so I have to head home. I just stopped by to say hi. Rachel was afraid of what she'd say if she stayed there any longer. Kevin hadn't said a thing, but Rachel couldn't stand the pressure. Oh, don't leave so soon. Why don't you stay a little longer? Kevin asked with a smile. I really have something to take care of, so I've got to run, Rachel said apologetically. Okay, we won't keep you, Lily said. She looked at Kevin and then back at Rachel and asked her, How did you get here? I didn't see your car. It's in the shop, Rachel forced a smile. I'll just take a cab or something. You don't need to pay for a ride, Dorothy said. Kevin's got his boss's car today. He can drive you home. Rachel looked at Dorothy in surprise. Didn't she know who Kevin really was? That's too much trouble. I'll be fine. Rachel was on the verge of tears. Rachel, why are you being so polite to him? He'll only hang around here and do nothing, Dorothy replied. Kevin sighed. He pulled his keys out of his pocket and said, It's no problem, Rachel. Let's go. At this point, Rachel had no choice. She grabbed her purse, said goodbye to Lily and Dorothy, and headed out the door with Kevin. As she got in, she noticed that Kevin's new car was a Maserati coupe, a pretty modest choice considering what he could have bought. After a few minutes, Rachel said timidly, You can just drop me here, Kevin. I can really take a taxi home. Kevin steered with one hand while he adjusted the stereo with the other. What did you just call me? Have you forgotten already? Boss, Rachel said softly. That's better, Kevin smiled and said. Don't be so nervous, Rachel. As long as we're already out, I might as well drop you off at home. Anyway, I don't have anything else going on today. Thank you, boss, Rachel said. Kevin laughed and turned onto Michigan Avenue. While he was waiting for a traffic light, he heard a voice in the car next to him. Isn't that Kevin? So you're driving a fancy sports car now? Kevin looked over and saw that it was Jason. Unfortunately, traffic was starting to back up, so he couldn't hit the gas and get away from him. Kevin, you sure are living well now. That car must have cost, what, 200000 After Jason said that, he looked in the passenger seat and saw Rachel. I see you found a lovely rich woman to support you. 
And who is this pretty lady? Don't bring her into it, Kevin said coldly. Kevin, you're just a poser, Jason replied. In fact, when Jason saw Rachel, he figured the sports car was really hers. Then he assumed Kevin had found a rich woman to pay for his lavish lifestyle. Kevin, you really are amazing. You've had free room and board for three years with Lily, and now you're looking for another rich woman to support you? I should have known. Jason sneered and revved his engine. Because Jason was making so much noise, the pedestrians who were waiting to cross the street heard everything. Their comments were pretty insulting. So he's married into the Joneses family? Another commented, I'm a handsome guy, why can't I find a rich woman to buy me a car? This was pretty frustrating for Kevin and he started to lose his temper. But Rachel, who had been sitting calmly in the front passenger seat, got even more angry than Kevin. The traffic wasn't moving at all, so she opened the car door and walked over to Jason's window. Suddenly, everyone heard a loud slap. You actually hit me? Do you know who I am? Jason was a little surprised. The young woman who was sitting in Jason's car was also shocked. She said to Rachel, This is one of the most important people in the Jones family. So what? What are you going to do about it? Rachel glared at Jason. Because Jason had no class, he said loudly, Not only does this beauty have a hot body, she also has a hot temper. Then he added, She really ought to be with me. The bystanders who were anxiously waiting for the light to change spoke quietly to each other, but nobody said anything that might risk provoking Rachel. Rachel glanced at Kevin and saw the smile on his face. This gave her even more confidence. With the support of Williams Media CEO, what was there for her to be afraid of? She put her hands on her hips and said, You? You're nothing compared to Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams? Jason wondered. The onlookers were stunned. Jason also looked surprised. Rachel turned around and walked back to Kevin. She leaned in the passenger window and said, Boss, I did well, didn't I? You did really well. Kevin smiled with satisfaction. Boss, it's backed up all the way to Lakeshore Drive. You don't have to take me home. I don't want to waste your time. Rachel continued. I'll go a few blocks west and catch a ride. Don't worry about me. Okay, be careful, Kevin nodded slightly. Rachel reached in, took her purse off the front seat, and crossed the street. The onlookers broke up pretty quickly when the light changed and the traffic was able to inch forward. As the car started to move, Jason yelled at Kevin, Lily's going to hear about this. Have you already forgotten the lesson that Drake taught you? Kevin reminded him. The lane opened up in front of Kevin, so he put the accelerator down and jumped forward, finally ending the conversation. Lily must have pulled some strings to buy him a sports car with our family money. Jason whined as he watched Kevin's taillights disappear ahead of him. If Kevin had heard what Jason said, he'd definitely find it funny. He just bought this car yesterday, and the Jones family hadn't paid a cent. As long as he was downtown, Kevin decided to head to his office and wait for traffic to clear. He sat down at his desk and sent Lily a text saying that he wouldn't be home that night. Just then, Miss Wilson walked into the office with two small boxes. She put them on the large meeting table and said, Mr. Williams, these were sent over by President Wright at West Chicago International and Mr. Cook from the Witzler Hotel. They said they're a gift for you. Adriana and Mitch? Kevin put down his phone. What could this be? He wondered. Yes, sir. Miss Wilson nodded. There was a trace of excitement in her voice. Thank you, Miss Wilson. Please don't let me keep you from your work, Kevin said gently. She left the office and Kevin opened the box for Mitch. There was a red pill inside. Kevin clearly remembered the pill that Mitch had given him a few days before. Since he took that pill, it seemed his body had gone through some changes. He wanted to find out more about this fiery red pill, so Kevin called Cook. Mitch, are you busy right now? No, I'm not. What's up, my friend? Cook had a sense of urgency in his voice. Kevin frowned and asked him, did you just send me another pill? What's this one supposed to do for me? He wasn't sure if he wanted to hear what Cook had. Hi guys, Kevin here. Listen to full episodes of Insta Empire exclusively on the Pocket FM app. Click the link in the description to install the app now.